This is part three of how to prepare a Jack Russell Terrier to go to the show. So it's all about styling, prepping, stripping, coloring, washing, getting the volume in and going to the show. Welcome back at Kitty Talks Dog for Transgroom TV. Today we have Luna. Luna is a Jack Russell Terrier. She's a rough coated. Luna is our dog. It's a very fantastic family dog. We love her to bits and it's been two and a half weeks since part two and four and a half weeks since part one. As you can see here, the hair is coming back since we plucked it in part one. Now, when you open the coat, you can see all very thick, small white hairs. So there's no more skin to be seen. It's all nice and white. When you groom regularly, it means you have different coat lengths and wherever the dog is too skinny, you leave some hair. You have different layers and you can play, you can style much better than if you would only groom your dog twice in a year. I hope you enjoy our video. If you are interested in any of the products I'm using, there's a link down below. Let's do some nail clipping. When you do the nails, quite often, you don't have to use nail clippers. As you can see here, I'm only using the nail grinder and it takes not very long to grin the nails if they're regularly done. I like to use my thumb and hold the nail grinder and pivot around the nail like this. And if you have a short coated dog, you don't have to put the cap on. If you have a very long coated dog, it's better to use the cap on on the nail grinder because it will protect from the hairs from going in. But as you can see here, we don't have a lot of hair and it's quite possible to use the nail grinder without the cap. It's very easy with our dental wipes to put the finger in the dental wipe and to clean the teeth. Because of the baking soda, the wipes feel like rough and the rough edge cleans the teeth very well. It's very easy, just put your fingers in one of the wipes and try to go with your finger in the mouth, around the teeth, even the inside. When you clean your dog's teeth regularly, even since they're a puppy, then they will get very much used to the routine and then when you have an older dog, there won't be any problems and they will let you clean the teeth like they don't know anything else. It's advisable to clean the teeth two times a week to have clean teeth and to have no smelly breaths. For cleaning the dog's ears, I really like to use the ear care. I hold the tip of the ear upwards and I fill up the full ear with the liquid. I wait a few seconds and then slowly I massage on the bottom of the ear, like where the ear starts and this way, all the grease and the dirt will dissolve. And then with a very big Q-tip, I go into the ear and this absorbs all the dirt and the rest of the ear care. For finishing, an ear wipe is very nice because you can even put your finger in the ear wipe and you can totally clean the outside of the ear. And now we have squeaky clean and good smelling ears. For the eyes, I really like the small eye comb. All the bits around the eyes, it's very easy to get them out. Just comb with the little comb gently and all the bits around the eyes will stay in the comb. And then afterwards, just with an eye wipe, you can very nicely clean the eye comb. For finishing, I really like to use the No More Tear Stains and I put this in and around the eyes and for finishing, I take an eye wipe and I wipe all the excessive uh, liquid from the No More Tear Stains away and then I have very beautiful, clean eyes. Mm -hmm. 
we're ready to do some stripping. Here you see me getting a magic towel and I'm just going to place this on the table and this is going to mean that Luna has uh, very good the pause on the table without any slipping because when we now we are going to stack her a lot because we need to see her profile she needs to stand and be stretched and sometimes it's nice to have the like a little bit damp um, feeling of the magic towel. I'm starting here at the neck as you can see, the hair is grown very much since the last two and a half weeks. And now we need to get this as tidy as possible. I've decided to use my fingers. I'm just going to make her stand up correctly. All the hairs which are sticking out too much needs to go. Here you see me using the palm pad. I'm going to use a lot of the palm pad. If I see too much hairs out of the profile I need to see, then I'm going to pluck them out. The neck needs to be quite flat. You can leave the top part a bit longer for later because the top part I like to do together with the top line and the back. So there we don't have any problems creating the top line. As for the top line, we just have to be careful we don't go too short where the neck ends and the back starts. As you can see here in figure one, this is a correct top line. And here in figure two, this is not what we want. Also, when you groom regularly, it's much easier because when you groom regularly, you have the different layers. If you only groom one time in three months or one time in six months, it's not possible to create a top line because you have no hairs growing back underneath. This is also why it's better to stack the dog because if you have your dog sitting and you're working on his neck or his back, you won't know where the top line starts and ends because he's going to be sitting and not holding himself correct. So here you see me taking the longest hairs out. And here you see from the front some hairs are still sticking out, so I'm just taking out the longest ones. Here in the neck as well, just going over and over and just brushing and plucking and looking and repeating. Also the neck under the ears. I'm showing here that I'm holding the skin on the other side because if not when you are pulling the skin is coming all the time like towards you and it's better if you can just keep the skin tight with your other hand. I'm taking out the longer bits. Don't forget a Jack Russell is not like a line here it's all natural so it's going from very long to from the front and behind the ears to shorter to the back of the head. Here you see me using the stripping stick. I like to use the stripping stick for the ears very much. The eyebrows, I comb them up with my palm pad and I'm just taking out the longest parts. Also always to have new hairs growing. Also in the beard, everywhere where we can, we're pulling out the longest parts. Here I'm showing you figure one, the head, how it should look like and you see where it's natural, doesn't have any lines and here in figure two you see how not to groom the head from the Jack Russell Terrier. Also straight, it needs to be, the whole head needs to be in one straight line. Every time you pluck just take a few hairs. Here. I'm showing with my hand how the head is, where the skull is. Halfway is flat towards the ears and in the other half it's coming long, longer and longer. But as you can see there's no lines visible. Here I'm trying to show you the Jack Russell Terrier doesn't have two eyebrows but it's one big one. The stripping sticks are very good for the fine finishing work. Behind the ears it has to be really tight and really uh, flat and really short and I tend, tend to leave the top line in a V to start with and then as the last thing I'm going to finish 
the top line. I'm first going to do the shoulders, the neck, the sides, and then I'm going to go backwards. And as the last thing, I'm going to finish the top line because that's very easy to make it wrong, I guess. And I wait for to do the top line as long as possible. And I work from downwards upwards. And then I'm going to start doing the back and around the tail. And I'm going to finish and do the top line. And sometimes then on the top of the neck, I'm going to make it shorter, not to have the V, to have a nicely filled top line. But I tend to wait for the top line until last. And here again, I'm just pulling the front leg forwards. And therefore the skin is like very tight and it's easy to pull out all the hairs which are in our way. Here you see me pulling out as much as possible from the tummy because the tummy needs to be clean and short and there's no hair sticking out underneath the tummy. But I'm stopping halfway. Just be careful not to go too far because the groin needs to be filled up and when you don't stop yourself from pulling out, the groin will go upwards and upwards and upwards and you will have a very long looking Jack Russell Terrier. Here in figure one, you see the groin and the groin needs to be having some hair. Otherwise you will have a very long Jack Russell Terrier as you can see here in figure two. The sides are finished now, the shoulders are finished now and here I'm daring to touch the top line. I've touched it only a bit and still I'm not very happy about the back because it's slightly curved. The back needs to be as straight as possible. Where the back is at its highest, you need to pull off the most hair and then where it's going down, leave the hair longer to make the impression the back is straight. So now we are doing the sides of the back leg we're going back to the groin. I'm sorry about jumping up and down from one bit to another bit, but when you are finishing, it's like one thing runs into another and sometimes I just jump from one bit to another bit. And here you see very nicely from the back, all the hairs are sticking out too much and all the hairs which are sticking out needs to be flat and it needs to have a nice tidy look. The back leg is like running into the side of the dog and we need to make sure that everything is clean and we don't go too high at the groin. Here I'm showing with my fingers I'm leaving the hair at the tail at the sides I can go more shorter I need to go more shorter to give the angulation on the back legs at the back of the back legs where the leg is folding there at that point you don't have to be afraid to go really really short it needs to be kept short that spot very much to have a nice looking angulation here I'm pulling the, the back legs the hair towards the front below the knees I'm gonna have quite short the hairs and then I'm trying to fill up the hairs to have the impression of making the dog look shorter. And here I'm pulling at the back of the tail because as you can see only two weeks and a half ago all the hairs were nice, clean, flat, not sticking out and now it's again very much bewildered. Here you see me using the Showtech Ultra Pro stripping knife, extra fine, and that's one of my favorite stripping knives because it relies really very well in the hand and just with your thumb you can use it like a, a I like to use it like a pincet and it's very detailed. You can do small things or bigger things, but it's very correct. You see a hair, you take it with like your pen set and you push your thumb to the point of the stripping knife and it's very nice to work like this. Here now you can see a finished tail. It's not too pointy, it's still like a big carrot and it's uh, clean. Here I'm finishing the genitals with a thinning scissor. It just has to be clean and neat. 
I'm using a thinning scissor to finish uh, the on these very sensitive areas because if you strip all the way there it hurts and I'm not using only the thinning scissors I tend to try to uh, strip a little bit and then to finish I, I, I like to use the scissors if you are afraid of using the scissors you can also use clippers but I prefer to use the thinning scissors because it's a very more nice finish and it's a more natural finish if you are using the thinning scissors and you are not used to it, just uh, brush the hairs in all kind of direction, close your scissors a few times and then brush again and repeat. And then you can do small bits at the time and you will also have a fantastic natural finish. Luna has a little lump there. Uh, Luna was ill a few years ago and she had an injection and the injection caused this little lump. I don't really want to put her under and have the stress of the small operation so I'm just leaving it as it is now. Here you see me stripping the legs. Again where it's folding I'm doing there at that spot very short. And then I'm trying to do also the inside, so for the inside I'm totally brushing the whole time and pulling the points and then brushing again and pulling the points. Here you see the angulation and in this angle you can see her straight back for now. And here you see her nice angulation doing some finishing. I think Luna's ready to go in the bath now. For washing I'm going to use the Pro Brightening Shampoo. The Pro Brightening Shampoo is a shampoo based on coconut oil and it's very good for cleaning. It's concentrated 15 to 1 and it doesn't make the hair any soft and it makes the colors come out right. It's a perfect shampoo for multiple colors if you have like a dog with black and white or black and brown. I like this shampoo very much. I'm preparing it in a bottle, in a mixing bottle and I always put the water in first and then put the shampoo in. So I'm only going to wash the legs of Luna and I don't want to go washing her back because first of all it's not necessary, she's absolutely not dirty but I need to wash her beard and her legs and her tummy uh, because this I need to have as squeaky as possible and I also need to do that because when you wash and you dry you create more volume in the legs and the legs can be more fluffier and I just need to do that for having that extra bit of volume at the dog show. I always make sure everything is very well rinsed. Here you see me using the ultimate conditioning mask and I'm using this because it's this mask is not really making as well the hair go softer. It's going to give nutrients to the hair and it's going to make sure I can like easy fluff dry and easy style in whatever position I want to hair to stand. Just make sure everything is well rinsed out so you have no residue either from the shampoo or from the conditioner. For drying, I like to dry and actually I feel it when all the excessive water is out. Actually there's a little trick, when you rub your dog, he's wet and you rub with your fingers on a wet dog and then you look towards the light, if your hand is still shiny, you see the water lying on it, then it's time to do some more drying with the towel or with something else. But when you rub, and you don't see the shiny water anymore on your hands, it's because it's okay, it's been dried enough and he's ready to do some drying with a the dryer then. I'm using the Zeppelin dryer. It's very easy, just hold the dryer towards the skin and all the excessive water will just fly away. Now we have a happy Luna, just drying with a towel to get the most of the water out. Luna's helping. 
She's rubbing her head to get off the excess of water. Luna likes to swim actually, she's a very good swim dog. Whenever she sees water or we go walking and there is water, she likes to swim. She also jumps off boats, even from very high. For taking out the most of the water, we use the zeppelin with the hose. After we're finished with the hose and the dog is dried with the towel and he's ready to be dried with the brush, then we take the pipe with the directional nozzle, put it on the dryer and then we change the zeppelin blaster to a stand dryer. With the stand dryer it's very easy, you go against the direction for volume, but in places where you need to go flat, just make sure you brush with the direction and that way you will dry the hair as flat as possible. With the warm air and a very fine slicker brush, we brush against the direction of the hair growth and we make the hairs look more fluffy and more standing up. We give the hair more volume. As you can see all the time I'm brushing against the direction of the coat growth. And the dryer is about maybe 15 centimeters away. Also the face I'm doing totally towards the front. This is a dried Luna trying to get out but very happy. But now we are going to do some finishing. A terrier needs to have a rough coat and when you feel the coat it needs to be texturized and it needs to feel not very soft. One of the famous products we use to make the hair feel more texturized and more rough is the English grooming chalk. But if you can imagine, when you put grooming chalk on hair it just slides off and to get the grooming chalk to stick to the hair we need a product to stick to the hair so that's where we use chalk helper and the chalk helper we put small bits on our hands we rub our hands and then we rub the chalk helper on the coat now this cream is like um, greasy sticky and it sticks to the coat and when you put the chalk powder on the dog, after you've done that, the chalk will stick to the cream, to the coat. So this way you will create more volume and another advantage, if you do that, you can comb the hair in any direction you like and because it's a bit more texturized and it got a bit cream in and, and, and it's got this calcium carbonate in it, it's more gonna stay as you like it and as you want it. So when you need some flat areas you brush it flat, when you need some volume you can with the palm pad create some volume. Here you see me rubbing in my hands with the chalk helper and rubbing my hands in the coat bits at the time. You have to be using little bits at the time, you don't want suddenly a very much greasy bloop on the hair, so it's better to use like a hazelnut at the time, rub your hands together so it's spread out on your hands and then gently rub it into the coat. And then we have to apply the English grooming chalk. Now there's many different ways you can apply the grooming chalk. One is by taking the bottle and shaking it because the bottle is a shaking bottle, like especially for powder. Another system is, if you have a small dog, taking a tub, putting the dog into the tub with lots of chalk and taking the chalk and rubbing it all over the dog. Another system is using the Showtech Plus powder brush and just dipping it into the chalk and then the chalk will also stay on the brush. It's fun to do it, or I like to do it this way, just rub the brush over the coat. Then all the grooming chalk will stick to the coat. Just apply in all the areas and with the brush you can go against the hair growth or with the hair growth. If you feel the chalk is falling off too quickly, 
you can even apply more of the chalk helper and again afterwards applying the grooming chalk with the brush. I'm lucky because I don't have to worry about the darker parts in my dog. There's only like small parts and there's like little parts, very small brown parts, but I don't really matter. It doesn't really matter. I just use everywhere the grooming chalk. If I have a bigger part where it's black or another color, I go around it. These brushes exist in large and small, so for more detailed and more small brown spots, you can use the smaller one. I'm finished with the powder and I'm just taking my palm pad. I'm uh, using always my palm pad by like twisting it and I'm not using the finger straps, the hand straps, but I'm bending it. And for me, this is the right way to use the palm pad. And this here, you can see, I can style the legs like I want them to stand. Here, you can very nicely see the front of the front leg. The coat is really short and it goes from the top of the front leg to the bottom in one line. And here in figure one, you can see the correct way of grooming the front legs. Here in figure two, you see how much hair there is in front of the front leg. And this is making the dog, first of all, look longer. It's looking like the dog is wearing socks. And this is not the correct way of grooming the front leg. Here and now I'm working on the back leg and you see the angulation. I'm trying to get out as much as angulation if I can. So where the hawk is, I'm trying to extend the hair towards the back. As you can see here, Luna's legs are not so very thick and Luna is a bitch. She's a small dog. She doesn't have uh, um, very much hair. And if I use the Snow White grooming spray, it's going to give me more texture. And because it's very, very white, you're going to like think there's more hair than there actually is. And it's going to also make it easier to style, to stand where I want it to stand. And here as well at the groin, I'm just spraying a little bit of the spray. Because it's white and it's the combination of more texturizer and the white, it's just as you creating more coat. As you can see, there's not much work to scissor the front feet. Just a little bit and the legs are nice straight down in one line. Also here you see the beard in one straight line, the head, the line, the neck. The sides of the neck are very short. The back is quite straight as straight as I can get Luna. Again the angulation. You don't have to be afraid of going short at the front of the back legs. Here as well you can see the angulation, the back angulation. Here you see me using the brown pigment stick and I use this to just simply make the brown color come out a little bit more. It's not a very big difference because Luna has a very nice color of her own. But when you use the color stick and when you've used the chalk, the chalk everywhere, it's also very possible to just go over a little bit with the pigment stick. And the color here will just be a bit more intense and also it will feel a bit more texturized. Simply put the small magic brush on top of the stick and just brush over the area that's necessary. She looks like a show dog and she's standing like a show dog as well. As you can see now we have a finished Luna. Her back is as straight as we can get it her tail is not pointy, but it still looks like a carrot. Her front legs are very straight in the front. 
the hair on the back of the front legs is a bit longer. We've taken all we can to give her as much angulation as we want. From here, the view I see now, I wish I had let a bit more hair grow at the groin because there the groin is still going up. Maybe the other side is better, but this side definitely needs a bit more hair at the groin. The color is perfect, the length is perfect, the ears are nice and short. We won't show you Luna at the dog show because we are in the COVID period and there are no dog shows. But for making Luna happy and for treating Luna, we love to go for a walk. And you are very welcome to join us. Luna likes to jump and run and in the long grass she looks like a rabbit. Of course all her hair is wet now because we do live in Belgium and the grass was wet from the rain so... Here you see the difference between when we started Luna today and when we finished Luna. Here are a few pictures of before the first session and after the third session. There's four and a half weeks in between. To maintain a perfect show coat, it's necessary to groom the coat every week or at least every two weeks. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them down below. We will answer all the questions. And if you are interested in any of the products being used in this video, there's a link down below. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and see you next time on Transgroom TV.